Okay, hello everyone. So I just wanted to make a quick video about uh, some quick shader graph things that I found useful and I, I had difficulty finding some good uh, tutorials for those. So I thought maybe I should, uh, you know, make one myself. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, I hope you guys know how to make a shader graph, but uh, let's... Uh, call it a circle shader okay so first of all the reason I wanted to do this video was usually you know I have I need some particle textures and I have to look around for those but a lot of textures and a lot of patterns and a lot of unique uh, things can be made directly inside uh, you know shader craft and you don't necessarily need textures if you are good with uh, you know procedurally generating things you can even create things like grass etc uh, so okay so let's uh, quickly make you know get a quad okay so we have a quad here and we i'm going to teach you a few tricks to get some uh, nice results <clears throat> out of uh, shader graph so this first video we're going to do things with uh, circles and rings probably so here's the thing first of all create a node uh, let me quickly see if the video is actually recording yeah it is uh, create a node simply UV okay so here's the thing most uh, tutorials I've seen people don't actually explain what's happening okay they they go like this uh, go join this with this make a multiply join multiply with this multiply this with that add this with this and now there you go but you don't actually understand what's happening so I will try to not do that okay so I have changed the preview to a quad and and as always uh, my videos are not very beginner oriented they are once you have got the hang of some some things you're gonna enjoy my videos a little bit more so uh, you have we have the preview working here okay so first of all UV okay so the UV has certain values going from uh, this corner to this corner okay so uh, now we can use these values like as kind of a texture map as well okay so that's why people are, a lot of people get confused why why do we use UV node a lot uh, the reason is like for example if I directly plug it in to base color that actually can be used as a texture if I save asset okay if I go down there create a quick material and give that material this shader we just made and then drag it here there you go so basically a UV you know you don't necessarily have to use it as a UV it is in this case being used like a texture so that's what people are usually doing so what uh, and also by the way uh, this trick plugging in the UV into the uh, shape uh, also allows you to let me say cube so it also allows you to study how the UVs of a mesh has been laid uh, out so if you use a custom mesh let's say if I have okay so the safety hat okay so there you go the safety hat has UVs like this so basically this is a good way to visualize how the UVs of a, a certain mesh have been laid out okay so let's go back to using a quad <clears throat> okay so in this video our main I idea is to use a UV texture and somehow get <clears throat> some circular things going with that okay so first of all we have to do two things first of all let's use this uh, node called offset tiling and offset node okay so what this node does is it takes in a UV so X and Y values in the form of a map which is technically also a texture and it allows you to you know move it around so what's happening is so at 1 1 it's not tied uh, it's tiled by 1 to 1 so basically whatever value is on this end and whatever value is on that end is not tiled but if we increase x so now the you know the these values are repeating okay but 
what's interesting here is you can actually do this so basically now I'm saying rather than start from this corner start from midway okay there you go so if I do negative 0 0.5 here I'm saying start the x values from this point not from this corner because this is the midway here so I subtracted kind of like 0 0.5 from those values and this area ended up being 0 so then after uh, 0.5 was uh, <clears throat> you know uh, the negative 0.5 was covered then it started from <coughs> then it started going into the positive if we do the same with y okay so negative 0.5 we end up with values that are you know zero in the middle of the uh, map rather than zero in the lower corner of the map okay so now we have zero in the middle what we can do is distance okay so by doing distance so every value is being calculated from the zero so so this is zero and as we move away from the zero the values increase and they start approaching one so in a way we have kind of like I, I'm not sure whether to um, calling it a trick would be fair but we have ended up with something that we wanted a circular gradient okay so uh, imagine if we go back to this and you you see so zero is here and values increase going all the way to the top right corner but since we did this we ensured that the zero was in the okay so you can do other tricks as well so if you wanted a moon rising kind of pattern okay so let's do negative 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5 again and we end up with a circle kind of thing okay so the so now other interesting things we can do with this is subtract an amount so imagine if this is zero in the middle the more we subtract the black part will increase in size right so let's try increasing the subtract value and the black blackness increases okay because it now has to you know go all the way up to 0 0.4 before white starts appearing because you know the values bigger than zero start uh showing up as white in these previews okay so now we kind of have a way to control the radius of a circle right so let's call it a radius okay so radius uh, let's call it a radius so i'm gonna set it to 0 0.4 okay okay so <clears throat> now what other interesting things could we do okay by the way like this texture this uh, sorry this texture right here we could use it as a very nice particle of particle texture as well so like like see this now for particles what you would do is go into the graph settings make it transparent and now you require some alpha for it for it to actually be uh, transparent so what we can actually do is use the same one and invert it one minus so the black becomes white white becomes black and use that as alpha okay so if the circle was uh, you know uh, small enough or in fact let's use this one okay so save asset okay so so we could actually start playing with particles made from a shader without you know taking in any texture we're gonna do this again after we have something that is more interesting now so now we are controlling the <clears throat> uh, radius as well another interesting thing we could do is feed these kind of circular gradients into absolute okay so doing this gives us a ring 
okay because the values where the transitions are happening okay the values where the transitions are happening get accentuated or like exaggerated so and you end up with uh with the those values highlighted which are obviously in our case ring like so if i play with the radius the rings radius gets controlled okay now same concept that we used previously here subtracting stuff if we subtract numbers from this one don't you think we should be able to control the thickness of that ring we can so here's the thing same concept the black region gets exaggerated if we subtract numbers from it so we could call it ring thickness so let's call it ring thickness okay so let me quickly make some space here and so, so, so just playing around with these things we're ending up with useful little tricks that we can actually play with and end up with you know useful things so now we have this thing now another important thing you can actually you know use is uh this is going to be a little tricky to explain but i since it's very useful whenever you have a kind of a gradient if you want to make it crispy and if you want to make ensure that in screen space it always stays crispy it doesn't get pixelated what you do is you take you know your differential dxy of it okay so i'm not going to go into the math of it but it kind of uh, represents how quickly things are transitioning from one pixel to other so <clears throat> but what you actually do here is the trick is you divide your uh, gradient with its own ddxy and that gives you a really crispy circle so what it does is it turns the gradient into like like a step node like, like let me show you so step step node kind of does the same thing but it's it's not going to be crispy on on the screen can you see the difference so one of them is not crispy at all and it's not going to be crispy outside the shader graph as well but this one is going to stay crispy uh, you know because it it considers uh you you know screen space uh positioning of pixels okay so let's do the same trick with our ring so let's tdxy and then do a divide and divide it by its own ddxy so you end up with a ring that is very crispy okay and now you give that ring to our base color and then you invert it and give it to your alpha you end up with a ring which always stays crispy no matter which angle you look at it from because again in this case our, it is considering our screen space to kind of anti-alias itself so you know these were some of the ring and circle tricks i learned and uh, i i found them very useful to quickly uh you know make stuff especially particles and effects and you know ring based effects and whatnot uh and if you found this video interesting and if you want more stuff like how to do interesting stuff in shader graph like like in a game i uh, instead of using a grass texture I, I i use noise to create create grass texture you know, inside the shader graph and shader graph is pretty powerful because it allows you to then control things through code as well and uh, i hope you found this interesting and please comment and please subscribe i'm trying to rejuvenate this channel and uh, the more you you know 
you'll engage with this channel the more motivated i'll feel to make more videos thank you